Welcome once again for worship here at uh, Vermont Lutheran Church in Black Earth, Wisconsin. We welcome you each week at this time to, to join us as we worship during the pandemic via, uh, via YouTube online uh, and, and hope that you enjoy uh, being a part of this. If you would like to learn more about Vermont Lutheran, please join us at vermontlutheran.org on the internet, www.vermontlutheran.org, uh, and uh, learn more about us. We'd love to have you. Uh, also, if, as far as announcements go for this week, uh, I want to lift up our our bi-weekly communion, uh, community connection that's going to be starting this next week. If you have some information you'd like to share, please uh, get that to Liz by Tuesday, if you would, at the latest. Um, anything that that is pertinent to the life of the community or news you would like to share would be appropriate. Our understanding, again, for this is that uh, the news that we normally would share on the Sunday morning as we greet each other in church is something uh, we haven't been able to do, so we'd like to share some of that online so we keep people up with what's happening in your life. Uh, we have, uh, again, the donation offering slot uh, in the back door of the church, back by my the stairway to my office, back by the white uh, box that we use for parcels and stuff. Um, please feel free to drop a note or an offering in there if you'd like, and uh, we'll make sure that it gets taken care of. Lastly, a reminder, the Lenten season is coming upon us quickly. Uh, February 17th will be uh, Ash Wednesday, and we'll be having a confirmation class with mentors beginning on February 24th. Uh, so keep that in mind as you have your plans for upcoming events and, and things, and uh, we'll celebrate together the season of Lent. Let us begin our worship service then as we uh, begin with our call to worship. The righteous are like trees growing in the house of God, giving fruit throughout their lives, green and full of sap. Let us praise the Lord our God, the one who gives us life and light. And we confess our sinfulness before God and one another. God of light, you are a, you light a fire within us and ask us to shine. But we are quick to hide and make excuses. We shrink from challenges, avoid responsibility, and deny the goodness of your creation. We seek hollow praise and then don't believe it. Forgive us for hiding our God-given light and remaining self-absorbed. Children of God, Never fear, for you have always lived in the mercy of your Creator. Hear the words of absolution and believe them. You are forgiven. You are made whole. You are restored to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hymn 532.
And let us pray together our prayer for this day. Mighty God, you gave the law to free your people, not sink us further into bondage. May we seek your spirit of truth in all that we do, that our lives may glorify you always for the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. And our reading for this week comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 6. One Sabbath day, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some wheat, some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew the, what they were thinking, he said to the man with the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. And then Jesus said to him, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said, Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now during those days, he went to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called to his disciples, chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who would become a traitor. Here ends our lesson for this week. I bring to you a message of love and grace from God our Father. Amen. You know, there are reasons that we have laws. Without any laws, our, our world would, would be in chaos and disarray and nobody would know what to do, what they were supposed to do, what they weren't supposed to do, where to go, those kinds of things. But there are some laws that just don't seem to make sense anymore. There may have been good reasoning behind the creation of these laws. I'm, I'm sure there was something that, that caused them to be passed in the first place. But maybe their purpose is outdated and, and they seem to make little sense to us today. <clears throat> Found a collection of some of those laws I'd like to share with you just, just to show you what I'm talking about. For instance, do you know in California, that a frog that dies in a frog jumping contest cannot be eaten and must dis be destroyed immediately. <laughs> in Idaho, cannibalism is strictly prohibited and punishable by 14 years in prison. I didn't know we had that many cannibals anymore. In Indiana, liquor stores can't sell refrigerated water or soda. They could sell warm, warm water or soda, but, but not refrigerated. In Kentucky, every legislature, every public officer, every lawyer must take an oath stating that they have not fought a duel with deadly weapons. In Nebraska, no person is afflicted with, who is afflicted with a sexually transmitted disease can get married. <clears throat> You wonder what made some of these laws to be passed in the first place. But just to show you that uh, Wisconsin is not without its share, 
uh, in Wisconsin, America's Dairyland. Many different kinds of state certified cheeses like Munster and Cheddar and Colby, Monterey Jack. They must be highly pleasing, it says in the law. So according to the Wisconsin state legislator, non-cheese, non-tasty cheese is technically punishable by law. Silly, aren't they? We have some things like this on the books because of something that happened at one time or another and, and people found it important enough to pass laws about it. <clears throat> there may have been good cause at the time, um, but like everything else, our laws need to change over time, don't they? I like to tell the story of my mother-in-law. <clears throat> I was listening to her on the telephone one day as she was talking with somebody else. And she, being German by, by birth, um, liked to find people who were of like mind and experience, and she would converse with them on the telephone, and she would do so in German. Um, it was a way of keeping up her native tongue, and it was something that she enjoyed to do. And I remember listening one time to her uh, talking to a friend of hers on the phone, and she's going on and on in German about something, and all of a sudden I hear the word dishwasher, and I giggled. After she got off the phone, I, I said to her mom, I said, you know, I enjoy listening because uh, I understand a little bit of German and, and I don't mean to be eavesdropping, but I enjoy uh, keeping up with what I know. And I said, but in the conversation that you had with, with your friend, uh, you said the word dishwasher in English. Why is that? And she said, well, it's simple. When I was young and in Germany, we didn't have dishwasher. So I, I just, I don't know what the German word is for that. Things have changed along the lines of time and, and she was not there to keep up with it and in her German language at least, huh? So it can be with our laws. We don't have many laws, I would imagine, or, or ones that aren't typically enforced uh, on a daily basis about horses and horse-drawn vehicles going through the streets and unless you're in the territory of, of Amish families, huh? We just don't have a lot of horses in our streets. So why have laws that, that apply to those? <clears throat> there was a reason for the Jews not having, uh, or having a law for not working on the Sabbath. This made sure that people would be able to uh, not be tempted to, to labor on a day that they considered a day of rest, one that was a holy day for them each week, one that says you must not work. And so they even have laws as to the number of steps that they can take when they walk um, so as not to entice them into going farther than they should and uh, spending less time resting and more time working. These laws still still apply in many cases and, and in, in some circles are strongly debated still among religious scholars of the Jewish faith. In our lesson for this week, Jesus chastised some of the Pharisees because they objected to the apostles taking off some some grains of wheat from the plants as they walked through the fields and they chewed on it, you know, you rub the chaff off and blow that away and then you, you eat the kernels of wheat. Uh, it, it was a, a way of, of gaining some nutrition for some, some disciples who were not without, or not with regularly, regularly scheduled meals, huh? and they didn't know where their next meal would come from. So beside being just a, a, a kind of a pastime to do as you walk through wheat fields, um, they also were gaining some nutrition. But I don't know that that would be considered as work, would it? I mean, obviously the Pharisees considered it work. They said, ah, look what they're doing, Jesus. That's not right according to the law. But they went so far as to condemn him 
for letting them do that. And, and, and further on, they condemned him for healing a man's withered hand on the Sabbath, even though he didn't lay a finger on him. Sometimes we can get so carried away in our efforts to condemn and to insult others that we miss the, the miracles that happen right in front of our noses. Huh? We become so engrossed in seeing that others are punished for the technicalities of their misdeeds that we fail to see the ministry that is being performed right in front of us. The Pharisees, all they saw was the disciples picking wheat. They didn't witness the Son of God in their midst. In Matthew 7, 3, Jesus said, <clears throat> Why do you seek the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? For when we castigate others for their breaching of a, a rule, a law, a tradition that we hold, we usually fail to see that we have not lived our lives in a perfect manner either, and maybe we shouldn't be pointing fingers. It's wrong to demand perfection in others when we ourselves are imperfect ourselves. Tony Campolo, a, a writer and, and, uh, and biblical scholar, reminds us that Love the sinner and hate the sin is not what Jesus taught in Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Instead, he says, Jesus taught, love the sinner, hate your own sin. And, and Thomas Merton, a, a mystic from long ago, made a similar point when he said, so instead of loving what you think is peace, love others and love God above all. And instead of hating the people you think are war makers, hate the appetites and the disorder in your own soul, which are the causes of war. If you love peace, then hate injustice, hate tyranny, hate greed, but hate these things first in yourself, not in another. The Jewish people have long seen law in a far different light than we as Americans and Christians normally do. To the Jewish people, the law was given as a gift to show us when we stray from God's will, not so that we might be punished for doing evil, but so that we can identify that which draws us away from that which is pleasing to God. It's, it's so that we might avoid such things. It's so that we might learn and grow. We often identify laws instead as those that define actions of, that call for punishment when they are broken. What happens when we instead see laws as those things which show a need for correction and a change of heart? Not as tools for administering punishment, but as guides for showing our appreciation to God. Not for chastising and shaming, but in order that we might help each other and ourselves grow and learn. In recent years, our view of the laws to, are, are con to condemn and punish overall, but we aren't all, or aren't we all, there we go, under the same condemnation? Don't we see ourselves as deserving of punishment? Who among us is perfect? Who among us is without sin? Maybe we might rethink our eagerness to convict and to condemn. We might benefit from making it our aim to learn to help others rather than in, in pointing out their flaws. We might even find ourselves more in line with the teachings of Jesus and the intent of our maker and on our road then to being better people of God. When we stop looking for the speck in our neighbor's eye and work on the log in our own, we become better people. Let us pray. 
Good and patient God, we are often a sorry lot. We want so badly to point out the flaws in other people rather than to acknowledge our own shortcomings. Help us to learn to walk more down the path of love and compassion that we might treat others for who they are, fellow children of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Go. Love each other. <coughs> lives are all offerings to God as we treat each other with the care and respect that God asks. Let us continue by praying together our offertory prayer. You desire offerings of gratitude, O God, but you desire honest hearts even more. Bless these gifts and turn us toward your mercy that our lives might reflect it as we head in the world in the power, into the world in the power of your spirit. Amen. 
And let us pray the prayers of the church. We pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Loosen our grip on the letter of the law and how we can use it against others. Instead, open us to the spirit of your law of love, which knows when and how to act on behalf of justice. God of truth, hear our prayer. Reform unjust systems and shatter structures of power which trample upon the people they were in intended to serve. May your ways be our ways, and may we find new paths forward by your power. God of truth, hear our prayer. As grain provided for the needs of the disciples, so have you provided all that we truly need for life. Join us with the land and creatures who exist alongside us, and free us to live in harmony with them. God of truth. Hear our prayer. Be with those who have lost jobs and other sources of livelihood, assuring them that their needs will be provided. Send your spirit of healing to all those whom we know who need it, especially those we lift up in our hearts and our minds this day. God of truth, hear our prayer. Our true home lies in heaven with you where all the saints of all the ages glorify you eternally. Inspire us to live each day fully here on earth, in assurance of that time when all will be reunited in your love. God of truth, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and shed light on our path as we seek to walk in your ways and bring glory to you through your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. And then because we sometimes get stuck in ruts, uh, today I thought I'd put up our Lord's Prayer in the more modern version. So let's play, pray that together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Simple reminder that the church does continue in its financial obligations even when we aren't meeting there. Uh, if you are uh, in a position where you can send a donation to Vermont Lutheran Church, please do so at the address you see on your screen. Or once again, you can go to us on our webpage and donate through PayPal at www.vermontlutheran.org. Www we'll see you back here next week at the same time, and I wish you peace. Amen.